so that is essentially the way in which all centripetal forces are generated. Now, we're not going to go into the detailed physics this evening, but my, my little equation, and I, I took that idea, and I took the well-known work by Hayroska, who had shown that the radii of hydrogen were golden ratio all over the place, and I extended his work with my own new equation and showed that if you multiply Planck length times golden ratio, precisely in a whole number power, you got exactly the radii of hydrogen. That was exciting. <laughs> it's like, oh, hydrogen? Oh, we just built the model. I built the model for what is hydrogen 30 years ago, but I didn't know it was a model hydrogen at the time. Did you know that the x, y, and z value of every vertex in here, dodeca, ecosa, dodeca, ecosa, dodeca, ecosa, dodeca, the x, y, and z value of every va every vertex is a whole number multiple of golden ratio, infinitely. The distance to center is golden ratio, like hydrogen. That's the reason phase conjugation exists, the reason gravity exists, and the reason superconductivity exists, because you have zero resistance for passive, passive charge through center. So, I present to you in relationship to this, just very briefly, because we're not going to do a physics lecture tonight, but what, well, first of all, this is what the picture then looks like to visualize another way. Remember, we're only discussing one picture this evening, and this is the same picture. Do you see how the golden ratio works? 0 0.6181, 1, 1.618, 2.618. This is what's happening at the center. It's the same picture I've been showing you all night, just different visualizations of the same picture. So this is what, what Nassim did such great work on. He said if you took, and I really congratulate Nassim for this, if you take the frequency versus the radius of the universe, the big galactic plane, the local galaxy, the solar system, the atom, and Planck are the Big Bang. So I'm taking simply the radius versus the frequency of everything important. <laughs> and I plot it. it. First of all, it all fits on a line. Ain't that cool? <laughs> radius versus frequency? Mm, interesting, huh? Cool, right? So but what he showed was if you plot those, you know, the universe, the galaxy, the solar system, the atom, and Planck, if you plot the frequency versus radius on one line, you get... Golden ratio, golden ratio, golden ratio, golden ratio, golden ratio, golden ratio. He noticed. And so he says that's the mechanism. Now, Nassim got one thing wrong. He says golden ratio is the result of gravity. <laughs> He's wrong. It's the cause. But that's okay. We'll fight about that later. <laughs> Essentially, we agree. <laughs> um, so, you know, lots of people are getting on board with this, which is sort of cool. And then we have Surfer Dude. In Australia, you have to talk about surfers. Martin, for example. <laughs> and Surfer Dude, he made headlines for months because his unified field theory, which is based on this, it's called E8, which actually, if you look at it right, is a stellation of this. <laughs> anyway, he became famous because if you model this symmetry called E8, you get every single subatomic particle and everything that physics knows about all fits in one pattern, one symmetry. But what he forgot to mention was that in that E8 symmetry, and this is all the subatomic particles, every known particle of physics exists in that one symmetry. But what he forgot to mention was that, that E8 is entirely built on golden mean ratio. In fact, the guy behind it, Mohammed El Nashi, he has 106 papers in the literature about golden mean ratio in physics. So the latest, hottest unified field theory, the, the headline making latest unified field theory called E8, is entirely based on golden ratio. So that's why the large scale distribution of matter in space shows that a fractal pattern. In fact, the universe appears to be dodecahedral. And so other scientists like El Nashi says fractalization is the origin of gravity and uh, Coxeter, I'm sorry, <coughs> He, uh, this is uh, El Nashi's work. He calls it golden mean quantum field theory. So it's sort of becoming a, a common thing for people to talk about uh, fractality. Ah, yes. This is uh, 
Andre Lin, the physicist, he says, suggests that the fractal nature of space may actually be the cause of gravity. I'm just pointing out to you that this is not such a revolutionary idea that we can understand these centripetal forces. Okay, so we're nearing an end to our science class for the evening. Notice that this geometry that's possible in the center of that construction is called scale invariance or global scaling or non-destructive collapse. Notice that it really sucks. I'm sucking the air out of the dodecahedron and it's changing scale without changing ratio. That's what you need to do in order to die well. <laughs> if you want to take your memories with you, I tell you, study that. You really got the key. Non-destructive compression. Because you take all the geometry, all the geometric information down through compression into acceleration. And that's the physics actually of how the collective mind, the communion of saints, which would be called mitogenic radiation, how it happens. So it's very useful. And you see how this is, what I'm talking about is actually old news. It was called the caduceus. In modern physics, that's called phase conjugation or perfect damping. It's based on golden mean ratio specifically, and Hermes called it the caduceus. So you kind of see that really, <laughs> this isn't new. <laughs> it's actually the secret of life. Uncle Hermes did have that right. So, <clears throat> Let's review where we are in our science class this evening. I have just hinted to you at why that one pattern for waves, pine cones kissing into a dodeca, is the cause of gravity and the cause of life, where, well, how life, life force gets voltage. I've shown you a little bit of how that's the cause of perception, golden ratio and brain waves. In fact, there's another neuroscientist, Steve Lehar, who says, Perception is caused by phase conjugation. He agrees with me, yeah? And I've shown you how that is the origin of enlightenment, actually, the bliss moment, golden ratio, and brain waves, okay? Now, we're not going to go into the origin of alphabet and symbol tonight. A lot of you know my work in that regard. We have origin of alphabet and origin of color on that list, just to show you briefly. So if you take that golden spiral on that donut, Here's the golden spiral on that donut, and you just look at it from the shadows of the seven arrows of the tetra. I'm just changing your point of view on that golden spiral on that donut. And you see Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, okay? So that's the origin of alphabet, you see? So alphabet was about seeing how plasma could converge to compress. If you can compress the electric fields in the right symmetry sequence, then you can cause electric fields to compress inside your head and you have the physics of psychokinesis. <coughs> How the rabbi makes a golem, why John McGovern can interpret every petroglyph on planet Earth that any shaman ever painted because he was painting the phosphine flare, the plasma residue of what he saw inside the liquid crystal of his brain. He was seeing a compression algorithm. So uh, this is just a hint of the physics of alphabet that, in fact, this symmetry of how tetrahedron stores electric fields is the only index to which DNA can absorb charge. So obviously that's the origin of the alphabet because the only form in which biologic memory can be stored. <laughs> so you can read about that and see more of the animations on the website goldenmean.info slash DNA ring. If you want your dreams to come true, <laughs> dream in the language of light, which is the elements of symmetry of electric fields. Yeah? Another way to see that is if you were to hang this properly in a tetrahedron under a tree and let the children spin it slowly, they would see the origin of the alphabet on the ground and then they would, their dreams would come true. Do you see the physics? That's the only way children should learn alphabets. There should be no other way, truly. So finally, um, before we conclude this section, I did promise you to explain briefly why this is the physics of the reason color, I mean rainbows, exist. We learned recently, Professor Karatkov learned to measure fractality in air because he went to where the Kogis were speaking to their ancestors, measured the air, and sure enough it was fractal, which just means charge distribution, which is obviously how you make